Right, welcome everybody. Today's video finds us over here in Mandalay in Myanmar and we're going to take a look at the uh, Mandalay Royal Palace. This is quite cool. Uh, it was a little difficult getting in here because of the current uh, political situation. Had to go through several military checkpoints to get in here and they didn't allow me to film coming through the military checkpoints but I can film in here at the uh, Royal Palace. So we're going to take a look around in here and we're going to see what we can uh, see. So this is some of the grounds over here. So there is like the, uh, like the relic tower over there and an inscription shed and a few other things inside of this compound. The outer wall is massive. I think it's like six kilometers around. And then inside of it in here, this is the Royal Palace. So it is spectacular. It is way cool. The outer wall I think is like 30 feet across and then it's surrounded by a moat. And I came down and look at, looked at it last night and I took a couple pictures. I'll probably uh, put those in here in the, uh, in the video. So let's go inside well, This royal here. palace was built back by one of the uh, Burmese kings. And it was actually, almost every single building here was destroyed during World War II. The allies uh, bombed it because the Japanese we're uh, using this as a base. And I'll put in some footage of that also, of the, uh, the 2,000 pound bombs and stuff like that that the, uh, that the Allies were using. So they blew a big hole in the wall and then the, uh, the Japanese were fighting to the death but they actually fled so they didn't even, uh, didn't, uh, didn't capture the Japanese garrison. Pincer movement, coordinated with the Chinese First Army drive on Lashio, British troops advance on Mandalay. Sikhs, Punjabis, and Gurkhas of a predominantly Indian division strike toward the city in heat which exceeds 130 degrees. The Jap garrison is under attack from north, south, east, and west. Mandalay Hill, a Buddhist holy spot and used by the Japs as a key observation post, is brought under artillery and tank fire. After capture of the hill, British and Indian troops with tank support move up for an attack on Fort Dufferin in the heart of the city. Frontal attack fails to break through the walls and moats surrounding Fort Dufferin. British big guns are brought up to breach the 30-foot walls, which are blasted with 100-pound shells from 4.5-inch howitzers. Battalion, supported by tanks firing point blank at the main gate, smashes against the fortifications. Japs hold up and barricaded behind the wall, drive the attackers back with machine gun fire. Additional films on the capture of Mandalay. Thunderbolts and RAF hurry bombers strike at Japs entrenched in the strongly fortified walls of Fort Dufferin. The fort successfully withstands a 12-day siege. B-25s of the 10th U.S. Air Force are brought in with 2,000-pound delayed action bombs. Coming in at low level, the B-25s blast holes in the walls opening up the way for tanks and infantry. Occupation of the fort is accomplished, 20th March. Supreme Allied Commander visits forward installations in Mandalay. Lord Mountbatten and his party drive to Fort Dufferin. They pass through an opening in the 30-foot thick wall. Inside Fort Dufferin, the mild square moated fortress dominated the entire city. Its ancient palace was destroyed by the Japs. The Supreme Allied Commander inspects Jap equipment captured when the fort fell to the Allies. 
Although the fort was not defended with heavy artillery pieces, its excellent strategic position, impenetrable walls, and the moat surrounding it made the emplacement one of the most stubbornly defended areas in the Burma campaign. The top of the wall equals the width of a city street. Inspecting a bomb crater in the wall, blasted by one of our 2,000-pound demolition bombs. Although ordered to defend the fort with suicidal resistance, many Japs escaped under cover of darkness. I think this building here is called the Great Audience Hall. And that's some uh, replicas of the king and the uh, queen right up there. So this building is uh, 61 feet and has a height of 207 feet. So it's 61 feet, like so that's a square, and uh, 270, or 207 feet high. And then here's some of the relics and stuff like that. So this is inside of this building. Looks like most of it is roped off. That goes to the back of the, uh, what they call the lion throne. See the wooden beams. And they painted around the base and stuff like that in here. This is a cavernous hall. If this building is 207 feet tall, this is huge inside. There's uh, pigeons and stuff flying around. And then this just leads into here. I think this is what they call the, uh, the lily throne. This is the hall of victory. There's another little throne that they call the Lily Throne. In here, this is called the, uh, the Crystal Palace. It's another cavernous hall. And then up here is kind of the, uh, the throne, it looks like. So this is King Tibo. T. Bao, however, and the Queen, 1878 to 1885. And the doors are, has this little glass inlay, and the rest of it's all teak wood. And here's why it was called the Glass Palace or the Central Palace. And all the floorboards are all wood, this, uh, this teak wood that they built it all out of. And there's all these other buildings. Now the, uh, the spires tell you the importance of the buildings. I have a monk that's on a tour over here. So different uh, levels means different, different importance. Yeah, this is really nice. So this was all destroyed in World War II except for the watchtower and the mint. Those are the only two buildings that didn't get destroyed. All the rest of these were completely gone. And they came back in here and they rebuilt them in, I believe, 1990. They looked at some of the original photos and they uh, reconstructed all of these buildings. It's just cavernous. Oh, there, over there is the watchtower. So that one there was not destroyed. It's kind of surreal watching the old footage of the, uh, the allies attacking this area because they're just blasting it with cannon and everything else. So there are ladders that you can go all the way up to the top. So they have to do uh, that for maintenance, it looks like. So over here, these are uh, audience halls. It's kind of nice underneath these uh, buildings because it's got a natural breezeway and it is so scalding hot outside right now. I like how it's constructed with these big columns. Yeah, there's no furniture in any of these. They're just open. And some more of the smaller buildings. Yeah, there's quite a bit of stuff to this compound. And then around it, there's also a bunch of stuff inside of the city walls or the palace walls. I mean, it's six kilometers square, I believe, around this. And it was built in a normal fashion where they would have had a total of 12 entrances around for the 12 signs of the zodiac. So it would have an external wall and then it would have had a moat 
around it. And right over there is the, uh, the watchtower. This is kind of a different looking building here. It's green and white. Looks like it would have been a bath or something. And then inside of here, it's just an open room. It's kind of different with these little glass things up above. What I came over here for is I'm wanting to go to the uh, watchtower. It's way, way cool looking. It's like a big silo with that uh, kind of sloped stairwell going around it. And then it has uh, this flat roofed building here. And then you can see that original tower when we came. So let's climb these stairs and let's go get a good view of this right quick. So it has a sign right there, the watchtower. And you can see somebody carved into the wall. It's just a little narrow staircase. Looks like it's gonna be quite, quite a climb to the top. All right, so this is why I came up here. I check out these views. A little winded from those stairs. But this is the whole courtyard. How cool is this? And that looks over into Mandalay. So you can see those like red spires. There's one there, way out there by that radio tower. And one there and one there. That's the outer wall. And it's in this big square and it comes around. And you can see some on this side over here. So that's the outer wall. It's about 30 foot thick and it surrounds all of this and the rest is just trees and stuff inside here. All right, this is fantastic. Looks like it's kind of getting a little rough and a lot of people have came up here and carved graffiti into it, which is so annoying. So uh, they left their mark and they will never come back to see it again. And you can see out here is just trees and uh, I think military buildings and stuff like that inside of here. All right, so uh, let's go down to the, yeah, these buildings are fantastic. So it looks like when they rebuilt them, they changed out the original wooden uh, tiles up there, or if they would have been uh, ceramic, and they put like the corrugated tin on the roof, but they still have all these wood carvings into the front. So you can see the mythical birds all around. Yeah, it's fantastic. They have some pretty accurate pictures of these from like the early 1900s before this was all destroyed. I saw some pictures from like 1903, 1904. So the craftsmen could reconstruct. So this is the Southern Queen Palace. And there were no furniture in any of these, just big rooms. So there were certain rooms that only the females were allowed in. They would other, have others where they did ceremonies, like ear piercing ceremony, stuff like that. Yeah, these places, absolutely massive. This was when Mandalay was the capital. It since been, was moved to Yangon, and now it's moved to the new city that they built just to be the capital. And there's hardly anybody here walking around. I mean, there's maybe a dozen people or so. So you kind of have this to yourself with uh, Western Queen's Chambers. So you have it to yourself with the pigeons. You can hear them doing their thing. And there's more of the buildings over there. And over there's a family, they're trying out some of the doors. And even after being rebuilt in the 1990s, it's starting to look like some of it's showing its wear. That watchtower was really kind of rough up at the very top. And then some of these others, you can see where some of the things are kind of coming off. But it's all wood and it's out here in this tropical heat. So 
nature is hard on things like this. So this is what I was kind of looking for, is this uh, cultural museum. So let's stick our head in here and see what this looks like. There might be some more of the furniture or whatever in here. All right, so here's talking about it. So in 63, they established a museum. And in 74, the Glass Palace Museum was opened. And then 92, they uh, renamed this to the current name. So there should be some, uh, some of the stuff in here. Busts of important figures. It looks like a throne of some kind. Some of the, the wood. And this AC in here, which is nice. It's about 41, 42 degrees outside today. It is so hot. My uh, camera actually wouldn't work. It kept overheating. So I had to switch to my uh, secondary camera. So they have a, an old cabinet on the bottom with like a Buddha up top. Let's look at this woodwork in this. So this is from 1859 to 1885. So it's missing an arm, but it's all, it's all hand carved and they chisel that out. That is fantastic. These look like maybe some, uh, I don't know if it's off of a boat. If it's off this boat right here, maybe like a royal barge. This is pretty cool. So this is what they would have pulled behind the buffalo. There's a picture over here of the queen or the princess with a couple of the, uh, the oxen. And you can even see they've carved a little lion up here on the front. And then all the detail work in those. So that was 140 years ago almost. Oh, and this one here is a lot more ornate. This was for the uh, king and the queen to ride in. So it would have been covered, but it's tiny inside. Some more of the artifacts in here. There's the mint. So they actually used to make the coins and stuff here. I would really like to have some of these old uh, Burmese coins. I had somebody trying to sell them to me as a souvenir because you can't get them at like the stores anymore. They have the 50 jack bills. It's like this, like oh, most of them are like old and wore out because it's kind of the common money that everybody uses. I think this is the, like the old stone slab that they carve, they grind that wood to get that powder to put on their face. And it's, uh, Ornate has all the stuff. These look like beds or uh, like couches to sit on. So I've seen these before in Thailand. These are like the Buddhist writing. So they write it on like a, it's like a leaf type thing. And then they make them into those books. So here, these are uh, astrological books. So they drew pictures and stuff on them. This is a toady palm leaf. The royal orders written on them. This is the handwriting of the king. It's a replica, it says. Here's a picture of what the king looked like. And then some of the important people, ministers. And then over here we have all the queens of the king. And some of the clothes. And this over here looks like, like the bed. <laughs> it's a big, huge square pillow. A 
colors would have been nice, those pinks and the yellows. So we have some of the little novice monks and some of the... They're going in here to take a look at all of these also. All right, so let's go out of here, see some more of these over here. So you can see where some of that woods come off the gables. And I can't even read what this one is. Let's see some more of those little towers and halls. Now I'm not sure if this green building here is the mint. There's no signs on it. I know there were only two buildings that survived the fighting, the mint and that watchtower. This is right over next to it. It's a pretty cool looking building. All right guys, so that's gonna finish up our video over here at this Mandalay Palace. This is pretty nice, it's, uh, it's worth a look around. The place is absolutely massive and it's uh, just kind of deserted. I mean, there are some tourists and some lo the locals that come over and take a look at it, but it's a nice little bit of uh, the history of the Burmese monarchy at the time. You know, this was all destroyed during uh, World War II. And what you see has been all rebuilt except for the mint and that watchtower. So it's uh, definitely worth coming over here and taking a look if you're in Mandalay. It's probably not the best tourist destination I've been, but it's, it's fun to see. So anyway, if you, uh, if you like the video, make sure you click like and subscribe and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. If you've been here before, tell me that also. And uh, if you have any questions, ask me, I'll do my best to answer them. So from uh, Mandalay, remember guys, life is a journey. So until next time, enjoy.